Your team decided to intubate a critically ill patient with multiple comorbidities. A timeout is signaled, all the equipment is ready, your partner recycles the blood pressure, and you review the remainder of the plan when suddenly your head explodes. No! The dreadful shock index kaboom syndrome has sadly taken another. But wait, wait, wait. Put that old noggin back together. Unruffle your feathers. And let's figure this thing out. Math is not my greatest strength. However, I recognize its importance in practicing medicine safely. In response, I found logical rules and a simple process to alleviate the anxiety and confusion. So if you can solve problems like this and utilize basic functions on a calculator, you can become a master of the shock index. And please, no more exploding heads. No one should implement algebraic equations on a call. I'm going to show you an easy method to calculate the shock index. The shock index is an important hemodynamic indicator of latent collapse that takes a minimal amount of time to complete, even under stress. Okay, let's see. We have a heart rate of 78, and we have a blood pressure of 120. So I'm going to take 780, 120, two large coffees for a dollar, 20 quarters in a roll of dimes, uh, 600 minus 600 is uh, 1,200, no, 600, oh, my aching head. No, 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 there's got to be a better way. Get out your smartphones and launch the calculator application. Enter 130 for the heart rate divided by 160 for the blood pressure. Wow. Are you a little surprised that the result is 0.8125 for the shock index? Enter 140 for the heart rate, divided by 170 for the blood pressure. And come up with a shock index greater than 0.8 at 0.82. In the last two examples, you saw a systolic blood pressure that was 30 points higher than the heart rate. Evaluate the shock index on every medication facilitated airway management case. One transient drop in blood pressure could result in a catastrophic patient outcome. There's an extremely helpful rule associated with this next calculation. Enter a heart rate of 100 divided by systolic blood pressure of 100. The result shouldn't surprise you. It's 1, which is greater than 0.8, so it's a very high shock index. Recognizing an equivalent or close heart rate and systolic blood pressure requires little effort to conclude hemodynamic pretreatment is a must. See if you can solve this next problem without even using your calculator. If the heart rate and systolic blood pressure are equal or close to equal, the shock index is extremely high. Resuscitate hemodynamics as soon as possible before sedation. In the next problem, see if you can predict a normal or elevated shock index by simply noting the heart rate and systolic blood pressure. Remember to apply the 20-30 rule.
Suspect an elevated shock index even when the systolic blood pressure is 20 to 30 points higher than the heart rate. The closer the heart rate and systolic blood pressure, the higher the shock index. For the last couple of shock index computations, I decided to share two apps that will do the arithmetic for you. One of my favorites is Critical. Select clinical calculations from the main menu and scroll to the shock index. Enter the data and tap calculate. MD Calc will work too. Launch the app and search for shock index. Enter the data and review the result.